Alright guys, I've been putting this off forever because it's fucking complicated to do this. But we will, first of all, I will show you my granular synthesizer, a few examples and variables, and I will show you how it works in the blueprint. Then in the end of the video, there's a very special thing for you, if you want to grab that blueprint and use it for yourself. And let's get into it. So what is this granular synth? Okay, the granular synth basically can sound like this. Let's put the debug on. Okay, depending on my distance, the granular synth uses a different piece of audio. <laughs> And let's check out this final example. Okay, pretty cool. So the first synth is using this as a source. Second synth is using the sci-fi thing. Mm. The sparky one is using this one. Okay, as you can hear, all these sounds have like different characteristic baked into them that changes over time. And I just want to show a little quick thing that you can do with a spark uh, thingy. Because right now it sounds like sparks, right? Like a little bit. I mean, I know it's not perfect, I just basically made this for this video. But if you use a different curve, Could be somebody working. Or a flickering light. Alright, pretty cool fucking shit. So, what do we have? Um, okay, so, first, I will, I will put fucking uh, timestamps into the video so you can skip between parts. Because first I will explain how the asset works in the editor and what these things do. Because the blueprint itself is just a bitch, it's huge. So we are obviously able to see some debug information, so that, um, you know, the intensity ball will be shown. What is intensity? Intensity, I'm basically the granular synth needs information, which piece of audio to read. Holy shit, I actually need to show that, I totally forgot. Man, I need to start writing scripts. So let's say you have an audio sample. This is a granular synth sample, you know, and the granular synth says, okay, from this sample, I just want this little bit of audio and I will envelope it in a way I see fit. This is a great right 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 Okay, make it shorter. Or use different envelopes. And then I will scrub through the audio. I, I will like I will change the area which I'm reading out. It sounds like that. <laughs> Alright, so this is doing the same thing. So I'm mapping, I'm mapping the range, close and far, to intensity, minimum and maximum. And whenever you see anything in the code that says minimum and maximum, you know it's I'm using intensity to go between these values. So we can use a curve for the intensity mapping because right now it's just it's just linear, but oh actually it's log logarithmic. Holy shit. Um, but it's not enabled. So yeah, right now it's linear, but if we enable that, it will use this curve to map the intensity based on the range. Um, let's disable it for now. Synth update per second is the tick rate, the maximum tick rate you want your synth to tick at, because it can be... Um, yeah, you can set it like... I'm, I feel like 45 updates per second is pretty good for what I'm doing, but you might have different needs, you know? So you can have dynamic... Uh, tick rate changing, if you know what I mean. So like the further away you are, the tick rate goes down. So you see in the debug, uh, you see tick interval per second, so it's going down now. And it's pretty much like two times per second, which is yeah, nothing. So basically uh, the attenuation um, 
the attenuation fall of distance is determining the fall of distance for the tick rate of this actor. And once we are within range, the interval per sec is going up again. Okay, and down. It's pretty cool. Uh, what else do we have? Okay. Grain duration, minimum and maximum. Well, minimum, maximum, remember, that's I'm using intensity for that, okay? So when intensity is zero, minimum value is used. When intensity is maximum, the maximum value is used. Grain duration is pretty much this, okay? How long should the audio be? Let me actually show you here by this, on this sci-fi thing. So grain duration. Uh, some debug would be really nice. So right now, so right now I'm pretty close to the synth. Intensity is pretty much maximum. So let's decrease the grain duration or increase it. See, this is grain duration. Uh, grains per second is grains per second. Okay, pretty cool. Grains per second, random, minimum and maximum is basically um, how much... It's like randomization. For example, if I have this to 10 grains per second um, and I set this to 5, I could have within 15 or 5 grains per second. So it brings some randomization into your sound, you know? Grain volume is obvious. Uh, how loud should the grain be? Now, grain duration. Um, this... How can I demonstrate that most easily? Let's change the curve to exponential... decay. Grain duration. Uh, how long should the grain be? So. I will make the grain shorter or longer. Hear that? How some of the grains are getting longer? Yeah, that's grain duration. Grain pitch, well, it's obvious. It's just a pitch change. Grain volume range is also obvious, it's gonna make the grains randomly louder or quieter. I'm gonna go up or down for that. See, pretty cool. Oh, um, grain pan range, well, it's the panning of the grain. It doesn't work with uh, Google Resonance yet, but it works with the Unreal Engine panning. So, the grain could be panned left or right. Envelope type is just the envelope type. Basically, how are we enveloping this grain? Because they sound differently, like for example, right now I'm using the exponential decay and it sounds like this, pretty much. You know? I could use something like Gaussian, would be much smoother. Would be something like... Like this. You know, a bit smoother. The different curves, they make different things and it's up to you to experiment what works for you. Grain bass pitch. Bass pitch, basically. Hey, <laughs> musician right there. Grain probability. How probable is that the grain will spawn? It's like 10% or 50%. Base pan is base pan. So the panning will be biased towards left or right in my blueprint. Playhead position. Okay, let me make this a bit quieter. Um, playhead position. So if you. I'm randomizing my playhead position. Why? Because right now the intensity is static, it's stationary, okay? I could obviously also... maybe that would be a smart idea, yeah. I could um, randomize the intensity instead of randomizing the playhead. 
but without it, it sounds like this. Um, let's make it this. 90. I need to disable all the pitch changes. And this one too. Hear that? It sounds very static. But if we randomize our playhead position, or because the playhead position is based on intensity, I think I should randomize intensity, it's much better than... <laughs> um, we will get this. The playhead goes back and forth, it's like... You know, it's, um, it's moving back and forth a, a bit of percentage so that you will not hear as much uh, repetition. So what else is there? Scrub mode, I'm uh, sorry, never used it, cannot explain it to you. Uh, playhead slurp time, basically when you change your playhead location, um, the playhead will go to the location with this speed. You know, l l lerp, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you know the linear manipulation function from Unreal. Playback speed is how fast should the granular synthesizer go through the file. Um, right now it's zero because I'm setting the player position, not the granular synth, basically. And seek type, I have never really worked with it. I think he's trying to go to the next grain from where he stopped playing, but I need to test that further. ASR envelope. When the grain granular, granular synthesizer receives a note on event, like pressing a keyboard note, for example, it takes in film 50 milliseconds to fade in, and after the key is released, 50 milliseconds to fade out. Sustain gain is 1. It's basically the loudness of your note. Velocity is velocity. Um, the higher the velocity, the higher the volume. Duration means that after note on, it will stay on for 5 seconds, or um, just go on forever. In my case, since it's like a sound effect, I want to go forever. Node input doesn't really matter right now for me, because I'm not um, binding anything to it. So, that was the overall view of this thing, okay? Let's look at the granular synthesizer in the blueprint. So, scale particle effect from there, yeah, you can go, fuck it. I have, it doesn't work anyway right now. Alright. Um, okay, so, in the beginning, we have the granular synth component, you know, you can add it right there. Reference that motherfucker and on the event begin play you need to assign this granular synth some stuff For example, it needs to know which sound source to use. So for me, I'm using a sound wave reference um, for their synth sound wave source Then I'm checking if the synth is valid if everything has worked out and I'm starting it with the note on event Another thing I have the attenuation here also as a variable, but if you set your granular synth to auto activate it will ignore that variable, even if you set it like um, set attenuation, you know? If you do that, it will ignore this, because the synth has already started before you set the setting. What you need to do is you need to use this... You, I'm using, like, I don't know what exactly to do, I'm not a bl blueprint professional, I'm just... This is like experiment, I'm actually proud that I kind of made this. I'm no programmer, but I'm using the construction script for that, because it fires or works before the thing spawns. That's how it sounds, feels like to me. And I'm also using a second note on event because I had some issues with the synth not keep, not playing when I change parameters. Okay, that's pretty much it. The synth is running, but now we need to keep we need to update all these um, all these settings, you know? So I have the event tick. Um, it's saving time delta for the for the debug stuff. It sets the actor tick interval. So we have the choice between uh, using the curve for that or not. Uh, if not, the interval will be just steady frame rate of your device, but I suggest you use the attenuation, fall of distance together with the curve, like that in my case, um, to change the ticking of the actor, you know, so it doesn't waste CPU performance. So it's doing that. Let's go back in the graph, then it does the update synth. Update synth is pretty big. So first of all I'm setting the player distance because I'm using that to set the intensity. I'm also setting up the tick rate, um, which is used in actor tick interval. 
Okay, so it takes the system a few milliseconds to get going, but you know, it, it works for me. Um, where is it? Yeah, synth update per second. Here you can set your maximum tick rate of your thing. Here I'm starting to map the range um, close and range far variables inside the asset, like over here, to the intensity. Okay, maximum and minimum, the things that you wish, for example. And I'm giving you an option to um, either use a curve for intensity mapping, because, for example, sometimes you don't want the, the intensity to go up linearly. You know, you want to go, you want to go smoothly. Let me just uh, showcase this real quick again. So right now it's linear intensity. Ah, oh, come on, debug, debug. Intensity is linear. You see that on the top left. But oh, I wasn't phasing right there. But if we use this logarithmic curve, intensity is low for a longer time, and then it goes up quickly. So you know it, you might want to use that or whatever. Um, so yeah, if you want to use the curve, it's going to use the curve. If not. Um, not. But if you're going to use the curve, let's check that the curve actually exists and then uh, execute this little uh, thing here. Mm, what else is there? After we set the intensity, it's time to set the grain settings. So, granular synth is being referenced. The envelope type, like I explained before, is just the your envelope types, you know? Um, what, what, what kind of volume curves do you want around your grain? So, grain duration. Um, I'm... As you can see, I am using this minimum and maximum values to interpolate between using intensity. And that's like my base grain duration. But I also am randomizing, or I'm also uh, check based on intensity setting, the variance of the time of the grain duration. Okay? So, for example, you could have it that um, on minimum intensity, the grain duration is very strict. And then maximum intensity, the duration is very, very, um, varying, variable. Yeah. Let's go on the next point. Grains per second. Well, I'm using, um, like I said, like it's the same thing, you know, grain duration, minimum, maximum, using intensity to lerp between those two. And I'm also um, adding some randomization into it so that the grain per second can be off more often, less often, you know, to just make it uh, as modular as possible. Then the thing is set. Grain volume, the same thing, uh, interpolating between minimum and maximum values using intensity and multiplying with the overall multiplier and putting it in there for the range, same system. Grain probability, I did not randomize that because I didn't need it yet, but if you want to go for it, go for it. You've seen it <laughs> multiple times now. Grain base pitch, well, it's the pitch of the grain, same settings here, just some randomization. Set grain pan, same thing here. Just some randomization. And I, I hope you recognize this grain pan range minimum maximum from this here, right? These are the variables. And I'm getting the fuck out of this function because we spent way enough time with grains. Playback settings based on distance or based on intensity rather, you know? So scrub mode, never used it, no, no idea what it does actually, but you can set that up. Playhead position uh, in seconds. Yeah, so what is the sound source? What is it? What is it? It's duration. Duration. Then I'm using percentages here, um, interpolating between them with intensity, and dividing here by 100 so you can get uh, f normalized floats from that, you know? And I am also randomizing the playhead position. So, also percentage wise, oh man, actually, I'm gonna do it later. Okay, and that's the playhead position. So that will determine where in the file we are scanning. And randomizing that is very good for like uh, natural noises or um, non-mechanical noises, if you get my point. Melodical noises, for example. Yeah, uh, play at time in seconds. Okay, we got that. Seek type, uh, we got that. Playback speed, well, it's playback speed. I'm not using that because I'm not playing through any samples anyway. Playhead post percent and offset percent, uh, percentage are just some debug values for me. 
And I'm using uh, the a attack sustain release envelope, so it takes, you know, 50 milliseconds up, and then it reaches the sustain gain, and then it um, releases with a 50 millisecond delay again in my case. Holy shit, man. Maybe I should build my blueprints the way it actually works, like that. Um, da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Okay, let's do it again. All right. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's my granular synthesizer, you know. Um, it's also doing some debug stuff. So in the debug stuff, uh, we are printing a big string. We are drawing some spheres. Um, and yeah, that's it. The append thing is just, you know, get some variables like uh, this is the synth name, this is the distance, this is the intensity, this is blah, 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 blah. So it's like that. And yeah, what can I say, man? Um, thank you, Dan, a lot for your blueprints. And thanks for all the help in the forums, guys. You are, like I said, free to download this uh, granular synthesizer from my Discord. Just hop in there, say hi. I'm building an audio community. And yeah, man, since Corona took all my film jobs, I'm getting into game audio, so I'm looking for work anyway. <laughs> <coughs> Hit me up, fellas. Enjoy the granular synthesizer. I actually like how the Sparks thing sounds. Like, we can tweak that a little bit. <clears throat> Let's make the probability lower. The maximum duration can be reduced by a hundred. And increased by 300. Grains per second maximum. I don't like that. Let's make it like this. I like that. That actually sounds. That sounds like a little. Ra um, mm hmm. That sounds like some sparks. Nice. And the sci fi thing, man, I don't know. I just, I just love sci fi sounds. <laughs> You can, you know what? Let's let's uh, let's do something pretty crazy. So grain pitch range maximum is 2.5. Mm, let's make it. that guys kiss ya bye bye